Um, actually, let me just ask you, since the yeah. term maroon is maybe not totally widely known, what exactly is a maroon? Yes, a maroon, actually the term comes from the Spanish cimarron. And uh, at the beginning, uh, the term was used for wild cattle, I mean for cattle, which had uh, wandered off the farms and uh, uh, by extension, it was used for, for runaway slaves. So it was cimarron in, um, in Spanish, marron in French, and it became maroon uh, in English. Now, what is interesting also is that even though the term is used, marron and cimarron, as meaning any kind of runaway, then it, it became really used for people who settled in the, in the woods, the swamps, the mountains. But in the United States, Maroon was actually reserved for you know, the large Maroon communities of Suriname and, uh, and, and Jamaica. And in the United States, Maroons were actually called runaways, simply, or outliers. But these are, normally when we think of runaway slaves, we think of people coming up to the north, getting to Canada. That, but you're, mo you're talking about people who s established communities in the south. Yes, so uh, communities are also individuals, mm -hmm. families who uh, remained in the South and uh, decided uh, to uh, live uh, in an autonomous way uh, in the woods and the swamps. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how did you get interested in this subject? Um, because it's, uh, it's a very interesting and unusual one, but not that many people have written about it in the United in, States. In the United States, yes. So how did you get into it? Actually, you know, I didn't really start uh, wanting to write a book. I wanted to really uh, read books on Maroons in the United States because I've been reading a lot about Maroons in, in, uh, you know, in uh, Jamaica, in Brazil, in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Um, Suriname, and I was looking for um, information on Maroons in the United States. I wanted to know who they were, what they were doing, where they lived, and really I couldn't find anything. I mean, I found scattered references, um, you know, a chapter here and there, something on a, on a particular community or something on a particular region, but nothing really comprehensive and detailed. Uh, over a large space and covering the entire uh, time of, uh, of uh, uh, slavery. So I said, well, maybe, you know, there's nothing to really uh, find. Uh, let me just look. And as I started to look, I found actually a lot of things. And so I decided to write the book. Excellent. Um, it, it, there is an, a vast literature on slavery in the United States, as you well know. Why do you think this particular aspect was very neglected? And you're quite right. This is really the first book about Maroons as a general phenomenon in American and Southern history. There were some articles here and there, as you said, but not really very much. Why do you think it's been neglected up to this well, point? Well, you know, when I uh, mentioned to other scholars, you know, I'm doing research on Maroons in the United States, the, you know, the reaction was always, oh, the Seminoles, uh, Florida, and, and I always said, no, 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 I'm, you know, I'm talking about Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, um, Louisiana, and people were always surprised, well, are, were there Maroons there? Because, you know, the idea, when we look at Maroons in the United States, people think of Florida and the Seminoles because those were large communities, there were wars, and that's what people think about when they think Maroons. They think uh, Brazil, Palmares, they think Jamaica. And the idea, you know, of, of, of those large warring communities, well, they were the exceptions. Uh, throughout the Americas, uh, Maroon communities were actually small, or, you know, not as big as what we uh, think they were. They lived for sometimes only several months, uh, several years, one generation. And so what I decided to do um, for the United States, again, because, you know, those big communities, warring communities, I couldn't find them, I decided to look for uh, individuals and groups and communities based on three criteria. And that was they had to um, have settled in the wilderness, they have to live there in secret, and they had to be self-ruled. So under 
no uh, control whatsoever, even loose. Um, and when I took those criteria, then you know I really find a whole world um, that had very much remained under the radar, uh, even though they represent really the overwhelming majority of Maroons. And my criteria uh, excluded a number of people. Uh, those, for example, who, uh, settled, who did not settle in the I mean, they were just there for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, it also excluded actually the Maroons of Florida uh, because they were not leaving Florida in secret. Right. Uh, and they excluded also uh, the Maroons who lived uh, with Indian, within Indian nations, not only because they were not living in the wilderness, but in Indian mm -hmm. villages and towns, and they were not living in secret either.